where did the carbon white SRT4 go? All right, so if you can get a chance to watch those videos, go back and check them out. Um, they got a motor uh, real quick, was in a car that was built, um, was wrecked, um, acquired the motor, had a new was it 58, 58 precision, uh, ATP, you know, they're supposed to be worked to the head, and everything else. Um, original owner was doing, like, was learning self-tuning is the best way to say it. Not to say that that's what caused this problem, but we got this thing running. Um, and it was cold, the first fire up. Ran it for a second or two. We didn't have any problems because it sat for that long, I guess. And two days later, I started it up because I had to pull it out because I had to work on the red car. Um, we're months later. I'm finally now getting caught up. I'll fill you in on what was going on there in another video. So, we did a leak down test on this. Um, losing compression around the cylinders. Um, it's, it's enough to get this thing. You can move this car around. Um, but as soon as you like, it almost wants to like die out because it doesn't make enough power. I'm amazed it kind of starts. Um, the oil is making it have good compression. But even just sitting here, um, we did... I did have it filled up with oil to the point on the dipstick and we ran this thing just to see if it was an issue uh, with the rings needing to be sat, seated, reseated. Um, but for some reason, that's not it. Um, it just wants to burn the oil. Uh, I just started it up to bring it in here right now. I did have it in, but I had a bunch of stuff going on so I couldn't get to it. So now I'm finally getting to this thing, but this is the reason uh, why we didn't see this. Um, the motor needs to be pulled out of this, and then we're getting it sent out so that um, basically a rebuild uh, because it's bad on the leak down. Every cylinder was leaking down. So simply put, let's get this engine out of here, and then we're going to push this one out we got some more stuff to work on and it's a pretty cool car but we got to get it all right so this is where the fun starts um basically we did go over this car we did straighten out a bunch of stuff to get this thing to the point where um it was running we fixed up the fuel system uh we rerouted some stuff i mean there's still a lot more to do with that stuff needing to be done correctly um we we're working on getting some of the piping hooked up here for the intercooler um so i mean there's still a lot here that needs to be straightened out with that stuff but like i said we got it to the point where the engine ran we don't have any any of the boost tubes hook up so we're basically pulling this thing entirely apart we actually got those threaded in there a little too far not quite sure why but this is where we're at. I got some containers. Um, there's not going to be any issues with any of the trans fluid. So we're going to drain the trans fluid into this because we're going to be reusing that. Um, I'm going to drain the coolant into a container also. Um, there's not going to be anything wrong with that because we're going to be reusing that. Uh, the oil in the engine. Man, that's a tough one. So... Let's take a look at that real quick here. Okay. So this is a factory uh, SRT4 stick. Let's drop this down in here. As you can see, we have very little on the end now. Um, like nothing here it's on that edge but that just is normal should be up to here um, this is typically uh, a quart from here to here and we're down here so we're probably I don't know I'm gonna guess we're two quarts down on that stick um, this is the DCR one I know they sell two different setups one for stock one with the different stuff so as you can see we're not even getting it on here so here's our 
here's our lengths. So pretty much that's your cross hatch pattern right there is about right where it is on that crimp on that end of this. So this stick is probably right. We don't have no oil, but we did. We added enough oil that this was full on this stick just to double check it um, so that we knew that this one was correct. And it just uh, smoked out all that oil. Um, there is a minute amount of oil leaks that this engine does have right now. Um, <clears throat> gotta watch. We had rain the other day and this thing was outside. So we do have some oil leaks here. Okay. So we do have some oil that is leaking off of this engine. So that is something that's going to also be addressed when this thing is out. Um, like I said, I think they cleaned up and put an oil pan gasket on it. But like I said, we do have more oil coming from somewhere else. But it's not... This thing can sit here for a couple days in this garage and there's nothing on the floor. So it's not a major leak. It burnt this oil off. So um, I'm going to start getting some of this stuff pulled apart. Um, I mean, it's just the simple stuff. We're going to get coil pack. Um, like I said, we're going to drain the trans. We're going to pull our axles out. We're going to get all this extra wiring off. We're going to pull the intake manifold. Um, we're going to unplug and pull this harness off of this engine. Everything has to come off because this long block is getting sent to the machine shop for complete rebuild. And, well, we've got a lot of stuff to do. I'm not a fan of these, so these will be fun here to get out. They'll be quite time consuming to pull them. Uh, to get those removed for the intake and then we'll have to pull them out and bag all that stuff up separate so i'm going to get my trans fluid pulled into these and then work on my coolant um, i believe i have a gallon jug that's inside it has some out so we can put some of what we get back into that all right we just got the intake pulled off hopefully you can see where it's shiny there that's all what oil right here in the back feeding in now there was no catch can look everything's plugged off the only vacuum it was getting was for uh, to feed the booster so um we were definitely getting oil coming back in through the cylinders so it was filling it up man all right i just wanted to make note of that it's all over the uh it's all over this here too you can see well right through there so all right so we're making some pretty good headway here um lower charge pipe turbo wastegate pulled the valve cover off because we're not supposed to scratch that <laughs> um but that is off i mean the inside of the head actually looks pretty clean um i mean the cam lobes look clean i don't know what cams they are because i didn't check that stuff yet but we have Crowler, uh, springs and keepers down in there, so it's probably growler cams would be my guess. Now, like I showed you, the oil, like it's, I can stick my, which one is it? It was this back valve here, had a bunch. And then this side had some. Then down in here, it was pretty good with oil so that's all out of the way um let's start the drain fluids uh we got a couple bolts in here um we're getting the trunk filled up pretty quick uh turbo guard was here i did have stuff over it but it does have some water in it so i want to let it dry out um intake valve cover turbo pipes and piping and stuff is just getting in fitting into here um, I'll have the main majority of the stuff in the trunk, which will work out really nice. So probably what we got to work at now is I'll grab another valve cover out and I'll just set it on top. That way I'm not reaching over uh, the top of that. But I need to get this harness off. We need to remove this here so we can get our clutch cable off. It looks like there's a bolt down at the bottom and it looks like it goes one here. And one here so i'll remove that and then i'll put these two back in um my plan is to pull it together uh but it looks like that might be an issue because of how this is 
There's no, there's no disconnect for this damn thing outside of the tranny. So I might have to let the engine in, drop the trans so that I can get it off to get the clutch sleeve off to be able to unbolt the lines to feed them through. Then we can completely separate the trance, then hook onto the engine and lift it out. So <laughs> what a complicated pain in the rear. But uh, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that should be fixed. This clip end here is no good. Um, I think I found another one somewhere else that wasn't exactly pretty. I'm pretty sure I fixed this last time it was here. I think there was something, but uh, yeah, still lots to do. Um, we're just chipping away at this thing, little by little, getting everything out of the way. Uh, looks like um, with the fact that this thing is a stage two with toys, I don't think any of that stuff's going to be used once this thing is tuned, um, unless it's something that the tuner can like incorporate. But it looks like I'm just going to let this here, and we'll. Hang the harness over the side and make sure that we don't bump into that when we're swapping out the engine or anything. What do we got here? Some different. Looks like an older fan setup is in this car. Because normally they have the plugs built right onto the motors or it's some kind of aftermarket. Looks like an yeah, aftermarket fan setup. So, well, on to the next part here uh, to get undone. Um, I said I think it's going to be that plate so that we can get the speedometer housing unplugged and everything else that's down there off of that harness out and then um, well I got to unbolt this off the back of the alternator and then undo everything there because I did feed that through the correct way already uh, and then like I said uh, the couple things here with this are all going to be part of a new learning uh, procedure so Let's get this thing apart. All right, so we've got our trans drain. We labeled our containers. We've got our coolant. That stuff's always a mess when it comes out of the aftermarket rides. So with this, I'm still trying to get this cover off. And I was trying to figure out why this bolt was coming out so hard. But right here, take a look at that. So this thing was forced in and strip the threads on the bolt and probably in the block. So I'm curious to see what this one here is going to look like. I still have the one on the back side. Then we can get our shifter cables undone. Now I figured I'd show this. Uh, this looks like they reused the gasket here, but it should have been replaced because it's actually leaking. Um, like I said, the more you get into this, the more you find. Um, there we go. This is, this is the one that came out of this hole. And this is the one that came out of the other hole. If you look, you can tell, look at the end of them threads here out. You can tell that they were really, really, really torqued on to pull that together, which is not exactly good. I would actually, me, I would throw both of these bolts out. Um, but like I said, it is what it is. You know, a lot more came out on the end, just stick it in there. So I'm gonna stick this one back in here to hold this together just in case if we need it. Um, we got our cables off of here now. We had access to that. So we're gonna get down here and we're gonna unbolt this one in the front and that one in the back. I like to leave these connected. One, you don't lose those um, clips. Plus you're not chancing damaging the cables. So, then we're down to axles and some other stuff. All right, so just a couple other things I wanted to note. Check this uh, out right here. This was probably reused. It probably wasn't new. Uh, it definitely should not be reused. It's starting to deteriorate now. That seal's bad. These, like I said, I'm not a fan of these. Um, these were all... When I install these, I don't like to bury them tight and hard. Um, sometimes it does happen when you do tighten the nuts down. Um, 
but I had to get on these and break them all loose. I actually started bending the Allen wrench here. Um, on the side note too, I wanted to mention that, like I said, uh, I've got these. These are the wrong bolts. These were actually going into the bracket in there for the intermediate shaft. They're way too long. I don't even know if they're the right threads. Um, and then just like some other things, I got these zip tied together so I know where they go. Uh, we got an exhaust manifold bag started. Here's our intake. Here's our shifter bushings. Um, on, and on top of that, when you pull some of this stuff so you, you know how it goes back together, uh, zip tie your bolts together. Um, and then, like I said, I just, I got everything kind of just setting in here. Um, as I'm taking it off, like this had this bolt, I guess, that comes with it. So we zip tied that one. So it's actually in there and it's not going to come out. So <clears throat> just some little tidbits. Um, we got a lot of the coolant cleaned up. I need another bottle yet. And then I still have a major mess on the floor. Um, we got what we could. Um, when you pull those uh, radiator drain plugs, it's just a bolt that screws in there. So it just blows everywhere. There's no drain. Um, would be nice if they actually did include a drain on them. All right, so just, I noticed this when I started spinning it out. So hopefully you can see it. See how that shaft is moving? Like are these bolts straight? Or are they twisted from getting tightened up? Do they come out of the bag like that when they're new? I guess that explains why it was so hard to get this thing um, when I un unnutted it to pull the uh, housing off. Like I said, this one here, she's tweaked. And that's down in the middle pretty far. Wild. All right. So it was a moment for you, but it's been a while for me. Uh, next day, <clears throat> I did get most of the coolant nest cleaned up down here. Um, still didn't figure out what to do with this. So I'm going to separate the trans from the engine. This does complicate things that there's no quick disconnect here and it goes inside. So hopefully I can disconnect it from the throwout bearing inside while it's hanging on the, the chain. Cause this is normally how if I'm just driving the trans. Um, once we get that out, then I can hook to the motor. Uh, I'll probably just, well, this bolt here holds a mess. So I'll probably have to come down to this one and run a bolt through. And then I can go back to the ordinary like I normally do uh, to get it out. So right now, basically, I have to undo this uh, trans mount here. And then we'll let this thing down. Um, I did find some other things that were pretty cool while I was trying to get this thing out. But, um, you know... We got that bracket out. Looks like uh, I think one of the bolts that was holding that in was too long. Um, and uh, man, they're just there's just a little bit more. Um, you know, if this thing gets reassembled, we'll be straightening out a bunch of stuff. Okay, so uh, working on pulling off the trans mount. I don't know if you can see it. Um, it's actually two different size bolt heads there. Uh, I did get the rear one out. It's actually. A 17 these are typically a 15 millimeter bolt head that are full threads so you can see here um, this might have been starting to go into the trans case to strip it out a little bit but that's the wrong wrong bolt there this one here I think is the same size let's see what we got yeah, look at that. You could tell that one. I'm gonna get when I get the mount off, I'll show you just how much of that is actually covered. I believe it's probably only like this much. Alright, I gotta see what size this other one is. 15. Alright, there's a 17. I did try a 15. So it could be a 14 or a 13 mil head. Alright, so uh, this was the middle one. It's actually 14. As you can see, it's not threaded the whole way. So, uh, middle. This one here. That one's probably alright. This one here. 
See, it starts to come through a little bit. That taper, it might not have damaged threads, but it's hard to say. And then that one, you can see it came through a little bit. I'll know more when I pull the trans out if it has any damage to those threads too. Um, like I said, if we bought this one here, that one's caked. That one's stripped out, hopefully not too bad in the block. This one here has is starting some stripping. So now that that stuff's out of the way, um, we'll see what we got to do for this because I am not into pulling, uh, you know, getting in up underneath the dash and pulling a slave cylinder and loosening the all this ABS stuff out of the way. Uh, that's a lot of work. Uh, it just doesn't make any sense to me, and I didn't really try to view in here to see if I can get anything, and I just I don't feel anything. There's nothing. There's no connection there. So. Oh my gosh, does this thing come out? It has like an aftermarket uh, plug put in there. So I don't know if that's gonna come out, but that's probably gonna cause me issues too. So, all right, I'm gonna undo this. I got the jack support in the engine. I did reinstall the upper mount to help hold it over. So let's get this trans dropped. All right, trans is separated. It's gonna be upside down here for a second, but you can see um, we need to get in there and disconnect our lines from the actual slave cylinder before we can drop this transmission down the rest of the way. Uh, which means that every time you have to drop this thing, you got to rebleed the system. Um, not fun. There should be like a, a, a line over here where this separates that you can just separate with like a coupler. I know it. I know you want to avoid having that stuff but it would simplify this whole process right here. So I guess I'm gonna work on getting them broke loose, then I can drop the trans out, and get hooked to this engine. Um, for some reason, like I said, they got these down here. I don't know if we got a crack in this housing or if it's just not sealed there. So that's kind of a mess. And he sees all over this. But yeah, there's where we got some oil leaking down across the pan. The back of it, you know, looks good. I mean, the block itself looks good. You can tell it was a park. Somebody, this isn't factory, it's resealed with something here well the gasket looks like it's on good for the manifold you know everything else back here looks like it's correct these here I'm wondering you know what I mean if they're not stripped out this one here is a little bit that looks like it might be usable this bolt here just goes right through so um, I'm gonna get the clutch off Everything is done now. Um, I'm just gonna work on getting stuff organized. I'm gonna strap up the, zip tie up the AC compressor and the power steering unit so that they're not hanging. Um, the bolt for this, just like everything else, I'll shove it through. I'll put a zip tie here so it doesn't get lost. Um, I've seen people confuse this bolt and then they end up putting the wrong one in here and it ends up messing up the tensioner because right in behind, this hole here, that's where the tensioner is at. You can kind of see it down here. Uh, these are, I think this is maybe an aftermarket cover. I'm not sure, but uh, there's that. All right, I got a mess to clean up, get some stuff out of the way. I'll show you a couple other things that I find and some of the stuff I end up putting away uh, in a way, huh, yeah, in a way that, uh, you know, we know what's what. Um, I'm gonna zip tie both of these jump bolts together and I'll pull out two new ones and put them in here that way they're in here um, we know we got to get this seal these are for the timing cover um, we're probably gonna be pulling all that stuff off there also uh, just getting this thing short stripped down to like the long block ready to pull the head type of a deal uh, just get everything put away labeled all nice and neat um, but you know there's the clutch so we end up with some brake fluid in here I'm gonna wipe that off because it looks like it's cleaned out pretty good and they painted it up nice and uh, you know I really can't do anything other than that uh, maybe I'll grab a, 
a vacuum cap and put it over that that'll keep moisture from getting into the system so all right this is something i didn't notice before take notice to how like this hole here kind of like cones down that's so that your acorn shaped lug can seed into there this thing here has these drilled out that is definitely a no-no this is an unsafe wheel it is freaking garbage how did this thing get put on this car makes me wonder i'm sure the other one's the same way but both of these wheels are junk too so the reason why um i'm showing this like i said these are supposed to be here i don't know if this was the wrong pattern and they tried to make it fit or what the deal was with these wheels um yes these nuts are going to go in here they're going to catch a little bit but they're catching a very little bit um you could also throw maybe maybe this thing could get thrown off center as far as uh you know being bolted on um you could hit something and like you could end up with a wheel flying off um it's not something that i would suggest putting on a car and driving you know something that's going to go 80 or 100 mile an hour especially since this thing does have these drag radials on um they're they're way too small for this car but these wheels on this bolt pattern is definitely a no-go the other one is a little bit different in size um i'm not sure what these are for it could be a honda uh it's just one of it's just one of those things that uh you know you look a little bit more you find some other stuff that's uh done incorrectly um i'm going to grab a bag i'm going to throw the correct uh bolts for the transmission bracket in a bag and then like i said i'm going to get the uh engine mount bolts i'm going to strap all these stuff together that way you know this stuff can be seen that one's actually okay there's the stripped out one look at that that baby is toast this one here is starting to show some where like these threads if you look toward the back that one's actually no good toward the back this one's not bad they'll be they'll be pointed um and when you start looking at like this one they look round here at the top there's no point and then they become kind of what looks like one-sided um because it just it was pulling too hard trying to get the transmission together or something at one time so i mean there's that like i said just showing stuff that i'm finding um this is all stuff that should be addressed before this thing gets stuck together And he sees on there, which is good. Uh, but this is going to get bagged up or wrapped with some paper towels where it gets put in the car. All right, man. It's out here. We've got everything cleaned up. Um, here's our trans fluid and our coolant. We've got a little bit more coolant. Charge pipe sitting there. Um, I'm going to lay a piece of cardboard down and probably... I'll bag the clutch up and I can set it on that floor. I said when you when you ain't got a lot of room for stuff. Um, here's our trunk. Valve cover sitting on the top. You know everything's in here. Put zip ties holding every all the bolts in. Um, I do have the bag with all the bolts, so we'll have that. And then that can just sit on the seat. That's not going to hurt nothing. And then this motor. <clears throat> can make it to the machine shop um they can pull this thing apart and uh i don't know i guess re-ring it you know bore it make sure that there's nothing wrong um like i said it, it's just weird at least down on every cylinder and you know we had smoke puffing out the dipstick tube so that's that's definitely a uh, a blow by issue there was no vacuum lines hooked up there was no boost stuff hooked up and it was just running like that. So um, I might end up pulling the alternator off and I can stick that in the trunk. And then I'll have to, to wrap all this stuff up here real nice in a box. Uh, the whole timing set. And like I said, that belt's new. So uh, the other one's already sitting in the back. Um, we have a bag started for... Here's everything for the turbo, for the exhaust. Like I said, it is going to need a new gasket set. Um, cam sensors in this bag. Here is our timing cover bolts. Um, I'm still gonna dig out the other two um, bell bolts. I'm gonna throw them in there and three for the transmission mount. That way, 
everything is there to be able to assemble this we got the bolts replaced um it will be kind of cool to see just how bad the threads are in that uh pull there on the block once i pull that one out i mean i have a tap so i could probably run a tap back through that um and then see how it is running a bolt through it but everything's here um we'll have to pull off our oil line we'll uh, we'll wrap that up put that in a bag too new day and i can tell you i'm happy for something i'm happy that i have this kubota right here because <laughs> this white car definitely did fight me uh, i couldn't push it like i have uh i have a bad back and a hip that acts up part of old man stuff but uh, i actually had to jack it up so that i could get the uh strap up into the middle so it was low enough when i hooked it to the front of the kubota so i had that drop down all the way because so i didn't damage this <clears throat> and then up front anytime i i pull these and they ain't got an engine in um that's where i hook down there there's a nice hole on both sides um usually if you go on the other side you'll hit the uh, power steering cleaner so i avoid that um it's not it's not that I don't see this quite often, but uh, a lot of people like to hook into this to pull stuff and they end up uh, tearing the frame around. Um, I just had one the other day that I was uh, checking out for someone. It was actually hooked here and it was pulled. So but this side looks good, but that's where I hook stuff. What a pain in the neck to move things. Getting back to what we actually need to see here is um, I got two nice bolts here. I'm gonna clean the threads up on these. Um, I'm gonna run a tap through these to clean these threads and hopefully it straightens them out that they're good enough uh, to reuse and something doesn't need Healy cold over here. Um, I did, these are the right, these are the right thread pitch. Um, they do use this thread pitch a couple places on the engine um i believe these ones are for like a front bracket um, i'm gonna find three longer ones um but i'm going to run a tap through these here also and try to clean these threads up because even if you just try taking one of these now it doesn't even really uh, want to go in uh because they had the wrong threads in them and here's this one it gets tight and this is the one here that was stripped out really good nope i don't even want to start so we're going to work on getting them cleaned out i'll show you what the thread is that i use all right so here's a real little quick lesson um this is uh just the paperwork it's a 40 piece i actually got this from craftsman snap on makes the same one um basically you can get on like amazon and probably order this kit but it gives you a bunch of uh like these right here if you want to tap threads uh this small one here is for like the 10 mil bolts so like your headlight bolts fender bolts all that stuff gets that one um and then if for example you can't get uh like this is the bolt for this okay so this one is they have the measurements on here it is 12 millimeter by 175 so it's the size and uh the size of it and the pitch so <clears throat> if we look at this one here I actually ran it through the head um it's really hard to see it says uh m12 times 175 so this is for the threads okay so this is like i said going right in and out by hand which is what you want there's really deep which most of the time you don't go that deep with the bolt but this does come out the back side of the block so this can be run the whole way through um, it's not going to hurt anything um, now this here i can tell you I've, I've got it worked on so it's kind of flush here but it catches down here so if i take two wrenches or a wrench and a socket i can run it on and then i'll run it back and forth now all these bolts are used um, you can see it is cleaning the threads up there they're like shiny on the end and you can see like right in here there is some damage like i said they're used bolts in and out of these cars a lot of times um so there is a little damage on the threads there but this right here is like i said what you need to do it'll clean this bolt up real nice 
right? Like I said, we just got the tip of this one, so it's gonna thread right in there nice and easy. And it'll get a little tighter when it hits the, the dirty threads, right like that. So we'll clean both of these up. This is the one that was really stripped out right here. I don't know if we'll be able to see in here and see if there's any damage or not. But uh, let's run, let's run this in here. Try to get it started. Yeah, see right there, that's it by hand. Here's an overall view of the kit. Uh, the front, like I said, I did, like I said, I've, I've had some of these Craftsman tools forever. Um, but there's stuff that you need. So, not that hard. I'm not having to turn this thing super hard. It's cleaning the threads. Getting rough right there. Because that one was stripped in there toward the end. So it was cross-threaded at the beginning and then probably straightened itself out. A little tight coming out too. We know this one is messed up pretty good. Um, you can see we got a bunch of dust. I don't know if you got to see that when I pulled that away. Once I get this off, It'll be a little easier to see in there because it'll be closer. Um, now, we did determine that we have 175 thread. So this is kind of, it, it, this is a thread file. So you can hold it and see how it's, let's just say, it, it's going down in the valleys like it should. All right. So that's the correct for that. So let's say um, we ended up hitting this bolt and we bent over one of these threads. We can just take this file. And it'll it'll take out whatever the divot is in there. Um, these work really go good for like exhaust studs and stuff like that. Um, they give you a couple of other sizes too. So, like for this one, we need the 175. So we can put the handle on the other side, and then we can just take it like this and file that. It'll clean, you know what I mean? You could you could hit this. It's actually starting to clean the dirt out right there. You could hit this with a wire brush too. And it'll clean it. You can see right there compared to over here where I didn't hit. All right. So I'm just going to run this in and out of here a couple times. I'm going to clean up both of these bolts so that we know they will thread in here without any issues. And we'll call this motor side complete. Like I said, I got to take off the clutch. You will line a couple other parts off this motor yet. This, I almost have the whole way punching out the back. Um, there is a tight spot on it. All right. Here's this hole. You can tell just how clean these threads are. They're a little shiny. But we got them all cleaned up. Threads right in. Now this one here is also done too, but it'll go in so far and then it hits that spot here. It gets a little tight. All right. Try blowing it out again. Every time you hit it, more stuff comes out. It's just cutting and cleaning up the threads. Um, it will. I mean, it should pull good and tight still. Um, you're going to be having this bolt. These bolts almost get seated the whole way in. So, like, there's pretty much where it's going to be. So, there's no there's no shake and no play. So, we're good, man. That hole is ready to go. It's ready to accept the bolt. We reassemble this block. All right. Now, we're messing with this transmission. Um, this is a M10-1.5. Um, I've already got these done. So, we run this one in all the way. I didn't even touch the center one yet but uh, this is just like all the brackets have the same threads um, the yeah all the brackets on the motor pretty much use these all, all the same thread uh, bolts 
Like I said, I'm going to try to find some a little longer. Um, I did get longer ones already, and I have cut them down and then retapped the ends. Um, the factory ones will only come in so far. You know what I mean? They're, they're a little longer than this. Uh, but they only come in a couple threads into these transmissions, and I've seen these stripped out on the ends already before. But uh, let's see if we can get this in here started on this one. It is pretty freaking rough looking. Um, there we go. Come on. And this is pretty, pretty rough on this one. This whole bolt, this whole thread, this looks like somebody just rammed this one in here in the middle, which is good. It's the middle one. It's not as important. Um, some of the mounts will use the fourth hole. Um, I've seen the DCR ones use that. Get past this one point where this one's messed up. Pushing a bunch of mess out this side. Check it out. You can see the gray dust there. Um, I probably should have pulled it out already and blew it, but let's see. Amazing how much comes out. All right. A little loose on the end. Um, I don't know. Some of them use when you're cutting uh, threads. You can, you know, you can use a little bit of lubricant or oil or whatever. It'll help with it. All right, you can see we're through. Um, all I have to do now is just pick out some longer bolts, or if I have to, I'll I'll cut them down and I'll rethread the ends. Um, sometimes. You can, uh, if you cut these, I'll grind the end and I'll make it pointed. And um, the nut, which one is this, 150? 10, 150? Yep. If you, uh, if you screw this on first, all right, let's say this is a longer one. I'll cut down along that line and then I'll pull this off and it'll clean the threads. And everything's good to go when you go to reinstall them. Um, like I said, factory, it was a flaw where these only went in so far. But uh, we've got all three of these holes chased. I'm just going to grab some of the longer bolts. I'm going to throw them, send them into here. And they're just going to sit with the trans. Uh, when we get ready to reinstall everything back into the car, if uh, that's what I end up doing, it'll be another video. But uh, for now... That's using a little tap kit. You can hear it starting to squeal. It squeaks. There's still more dust in here. The more you run these in and out and then you clean them off, um, you'll have a cleaner, cleaner threads. Um, you know, you could spray it out with some brake clean and then hit it with some 
you know, a little bit of uh, dirt or oil or whatever. Uh, I usually don't like it because then it gets gummed up into threads. This stuff usually just comes right out. Um, yeah, there you go. Let's just, uh, let's just take one of these. Now, like, I didn't th clean these threads, so, but... that easy right in you know it's it's the couple minutes it takes when you uh, when you need to, when you want to clean this stuff up uh, that makes assembly so much nicer so here we go we're just gonna end it there that's the video and uh, well if you see any more of this we're gonna be installing the engine and uh, if that happens I'll make sure to include you guys. See ya.